Hey, Pre-Calc students, today we're going to talk about Lesson 5.4, Day 4. We're going to continue on with how to solve um, trig equations over the domain of 0 to 2 pi. 0 included, 2 pi not included. So if you look at the notation, remember that parentheses means not included and bracket means included. Go ahead and pause the video. Make sure you write down the title of the lesson for today and the directions for the problems that we're going to be doing. Push play when you're ready. Okay, if you take a look at number one, the difference between this problem and the ones that we've done is that they're, ta they're asking you the sine of what angle times 3 is a half. Previously, in another section, this problem would have just appeared simply like this. Okay? And then we would just, this is asking sine of what angle is a half. So we'd go through, find the reference angle, figure out what right triangle or what special triangle we need to use, etc. But here, they don't want to know the, the sine of what angle is a half. They want to know the sine of what angle times 3 is a half. So the way we're going to do it is we're going to very similarly think of it as if the 3 wasn't even there. So you're going to take a look at what's in the parentheses and you're going to save that for last. You're just going to ask yourself, let's say that the 3 wasn't there. What, what angle has a sine of a half? Okay, well, think of your special triangles. We have 30, 60, 90. forty five, forty five, ninety, And, of course, the quadrantal angles. But think of all your side lengths. So feel free to write all of these down if you want, if you think it'll help. Okay. Now, if I go through and I say, okay, let's start with the 30, 60, 90. A uh, quick reminder that pi over 6 is the 30 degrees in radians. Pi over 3 is your 60 degrees, and pi over 2 is your 90 degrees, okay? Pi over 4 is your 45 degrees. All right, sine of what angle is a half? Sine is opposite over hypotenuse, so let's start with 30. Opposite over hypotenuse, would that give me one half? No. Yeah. So then our reference angle is 30 degrees. Obviously, this was just luck. Um, but if that hadn't worked, then I'd move on to the 60. Does the sine of 60 give me a half? Sine of 60 is opposite over hypotenuse, root 3 over 2? Nope. And you would go through all of your angles. If none of the triangles give you a sine of 1 half and none of those angles work, then you'd move on to the quadrantal angles. Okay, but we notice that your reference angle is 30 degrees, which is pi over 6. Okay, now we need the sine to be positive a half. So we're looking at which quadrants. In which quadrants is the sine positive? Remember, sine is referring to a y value of a coordinate of a, an ordered pair. So y's are positive only in quadrants 1 and 2, only here. I'm going to draw two angles, one in quadrant 1, one in quadrant 2, so that the reference angles are 30, which is pi over 6. Now this is 0 degrees, 0 in pi. This is, Remember, your reference angle is pi over 6, so this would be 6 pi over 6, a.k.a. 1 pi. Okay, so we need a reference angle of pi over 6, so... We need to be able to go pi over 6 this way. And then pi over 6 away from 6 pi would be 5 pi over 6. 
Now in the previous section, remember I told you that we'd be pretty much done by now because the sine of what angle is a half? Sine of pi over 6. Our solutions would be pi over 6 and 5 pi over 6. But remember, this is not what the problem was asking. The original problem was asking the sine of what angle times 3 is a half. Now, you know that the answer for had this just been x, the answer would have been 1 pi over 6 and 5 pi over 6. But since we didn't have just x, we have 3x, we're going to set each of those equal to 3x. So whatever was in the parentheses, that's what you're going to set your two solutions equal to. Now remember, your solutions were 5 pi over 6 and pi over 6, right? These were the two solutions. Had this just been an x, but because it's 3x, you have a little extra work to do. In order for you to solve for x, which is what you're going to do any time they ask you to solve, you need a coefficient of 1. So in order for me to get rid of this multiplication, I could divide by 3. Or since I already have fractions here, I'm going to multiply by the reciprocal. So I'm going to go ahead and multiply this by 1 third. Again, you could have also just divided both sides by 3. This would cancel, and I'd get left with a 1x. Remember, when you are solving for x, you should have x by itself with a leading coefficient of 1. And then multiply from left to right. I know on your quiz, sometimes you guys said cross multiply. Cross multiply makes an x. That's not how you multiply fractions. You've got to multiply them from left to right. So numerator with numerator, denominator with denominator. This would give you 1 pi over 18. That is your solution. This guy, same thing. I'm going to multiply by 1 third. You could also divide by 3. Oops, that gets rid of not the whole 3x, just the 3. So this cancels to just 1x. And then I would get, remember, multiply, not, a, not cross multiply, across from left to right. That would be 5 pi over 18. How can we check if we did this right? Well, look at the original problem. It said sine of what angle times 3, or sorry, yeah, what angle times 3 would give you a half? Well, we said that 3 times 1 pi over 18 would work. Put it in your calculator, see if that's true. We also said the sine of 3 times 5 pi over 18 would work and give me 1 half. That's how you can check your answers, guys. You are allowed to use a calculator. Always show your work. And actually, that's something that I always want you to do. Add that to your directions. Draw a diagram. Draw a diagram. So you can always use your calculator to check your solutions. Your two solutions are 1 pi over 18 and 5 pi over 18. So this lesson is very similar to what we did previously, except instead of just having the sine of an angle x or the cosine of an angle x, there's going to be a number either added, subtracted, multiplied, or divided with your variable. You're going to deal with that at the end once you find your reference angle and the angles that you're looking for. Okay, let's try another example. Okay, so notice there are other numbers in the parentheses with the x. You're not going to deal with those right now. You're just going to ask yourself the cosine of what angle equals root 2 over 2. So this looks similar to what we did in the previous lesson. Think of it as if it had just done this, or if it's asking for that. Cosine of what angle is root 2 over 2? Okay. 
So think of your special angles in your triangles. Cosine is adjacent over hypotenuse. So I'm going to go through, and I'm going to ask myself, would 30 work? Adjacent over hypotenuse, would that give me root 2 over 2? Nope. How about 60? Adjacent over hypotenuse? Nope. 45? Adjacent over hypotenuse? Yes, because 1 over root 2 rationalizes to root 2 over 2. So then my reference angle is 45 degrees. Reference angle is 45 degrees, a.k.a. pi over 4. Okay, cosine refers to the x value of an ordered pair in the unit circle. So we are going to think, okay, cosine is positive, which is the x value, in quadrants 1 and 4. So I need to draw two angles so that the reference angle is 45 degrees. So that would be 1 pi over 4 away from 0. And then if you keep going all around the circle, okay, that's 1 pi over 4, 2 pi over 4. So this would be essentially cutting the each half of the circle into four parts. For those of you that aren't sure how to do it, remember I always told you whatever the denominator is, that's what you cut each half of the circle into. Okay, this would be 5 pi over 4, this would be 3 pi over 4, etc. 6 pi over 4, obviously, some of these reduce, right? 2 pi over 4 reduces, 6 pi over 4 reduces, this would be 7 pi over 4. Those are the ones we're looking for. They have a reference angle of pi over 4 from the x-axis. Okay, now, in the previous section we'd be done, we'd say that the cosine of pi over 4 is root 2 over 2 and the cosine of 7 pi over 4 is root 2 over 2. But in this section, they had that 2x over 3. So that's what you're going to set your solutions equal to. So there's your pi over 4. You can do it again for 7 pi over 4. Okay? Okay, so again, it doesn't just it doesn't just have x. So we in the previous section we'd be done by now. It'd be pi over four, seven pi over four. It says two x over three. So we have a little bit of work to do. We need to solve for x. So if you notice this is like a two thirds that's multiplied with the x, so I'm gonna use the reciprocal. I'm gonna multiply by three halves because my goal is to leave the x by itself. When you multiply 2 thirds times 3 halves, you get a coefficient of 1. And when you're solving, that's what you want to do. Now you multiply across, not cross multiply. So that'd be 3 pi over 8. If it reduces, go ahead and reduce it. If not, you're done. And then over here, I'm going to also solve this one. Multiply by the reciprocal. Your coefficient becomes 1. Great. Anytime you're solving for x, you should have a coefficient of 1 in your final answer. I get 21 pi over 8. Now, 3 pi over 8, so if you're thinking of a full rotation, because remember, we're restricted by the domain of from 0 to 2 pi, right? So if you're thinking denominator of 8, that means that a full rotation, so if this is 0, a one full rotation would be 16 pi over 8. How come? Because what's 16 over 8? 2. And that's always a full rotation, 2 pi. So this would be 8 pi over 8. 3 pi over 8 is definitely within that one full rotation. Is 21 pi over 8 within that full rotation? What do you think? 21 pi over 8 is not within a full rotation. It actually is past it. So this would be considered an extraneous solution. You would just say not within domain. Okay, so our only solution for this problem is 3 pi over 8. Again, you can substitute 3 pi over 8 
into the original problem where x is and type the left side of the equation into your calculator. So type in cosine of 2 thirds times 3 pi over 8 and see if you get root 2 over 2. You should. Okay, let's try number 3. Okay, so in the previous lesson, you would have seen, instead of x plus pi over 6, you would have just seen tangent of what angle equals 0. Now, no matter what triangle you use, whether it's a 30, 60, 90, 45, 45, 90, none of those angles, neither the 30, 60, or 45, is going to give you opposite over adjacent. So remember, tangent is opposite over adjacent. None of those angles is going to give you zero when you do opposite over adjacent. Take a look. 30, opposite over adjacent, doesn't give you zero. 60, opposite over adjacent, nope. 45, opposite over adjacent, nope. So it has to be a quadrantal angle. Now, when you're looking at quadrantal angles, tangent is not opposite over adjacent because opposite over adjacent requires you to use a triangle. We just said that none of the triangles would work. Tangent of an angle is the y value over the x value, aka sine over cosine. So we got to ask ourselves, which of these ordered pairs, if I take the y value over the x value, would give me zero? Take a minute, pause the video, and ask yourself which quadrantal angles would give me a tangent that is zero. Push play when you're ready. Okay, hopefully you picked this one and this one. Because zero over one equals zero and zero over negative one equals zero. Now those angles, if we're looking at our domain, would be zero and pi. Now, we'd be done in the previous section if they just asked tangent of one angle is zero, right? Like over here. But they're not asking you for tangent of one angle is zero. It's they're asking you for tangent of one angle plus pi over six equals zero. So those two solutions you just found, which were pi and zero, right? Pi and zero. You're going to set those equal to what was in the parentheses. So that's the extra step compared to the previous lesson. Okay, so now all you have to do is get the x by itself, solve for x. This is addition, so I'm going to go ahead and subtract 1 pi over 6 from both sides here. Same here. Now be careful because 1 pi is a whole number. So in order for me to be able to combine those, I have 1 pi minus 1 pi over 6. I need a common denominator. need lowest common denominator. So 1 pi, if I need to write it as a denominator of 6, that would just be 6 pi over 6, right? Because 6 divided by 6 is 1, and then you get that 1 pi. Oops, I don't know why I put an equal sign. So in order for me to be able to subtract those two, I need a common denominator. And I'd get a solution of 5 pi over 6, because 6 pi over 6 minus 1 pi over 6 is 5 pi over 6. So that's one solution right there that is within the domain of 0 to 2 pi. In When you're dealing with denominators of 6, one full rotation would be... 12 pi over 6. So as long as I'm within that full rotation, not counting that 2 pi, remember two, 12 pi over 6 is the 2 pi. So 5 pi over 6 is definitely within the range from 0 to 2 pi, aka from 0 to 12 pi over 6. Now this guy, unfortunately, 0 minus pi over 6 is negative pi over 6. 
that is not within the domain. The domain asks for only positive angles, and negative angles are not within that domain. So we only have one solution. Okay, now moving on to another one that has a little bit more work involved. Go ahead and write this one down. This one is a good combination of um, section 544 notes day three in this new section. Okay. For this one, I recommend watching the video first, listening to all the steps, and then rewinding the video and watching it, and then writing the steps down. Anytime you're solving in algebra, you should be using something called SADMAP. So if you look back at all the previous lessons in 5.4, when we started solving, I said to use SADMAP with the quadratics. Sometimes we were able to factor, et cetera. Now this quadratic does not have a linear term, so I don't need to factor it and set it equal to zero. This quadratic has got 2 cosine squared of 3x plus 4. We've got subtraction and addition. We've got multiplication or division. We've got an exponent. So we have addition. We have an exponent. We have multiplication. And then we also have P. We have the parentheses. So when you're solving quadratic equations in trig, the first thing you want to do is ask yourself, what strategy am I going to use? Am I going to use factoring? And am I going to use um, inverse operation, SADMAP? So if there's no linear term, then you can go ahead and um, notice that there's no cosine of just x, cosine to the first power. That's what I mean by linear term in this case. We did some other ones where they, they'd have a cosine squared and a cosine. So this one just has the quadratic term. Okay, so I'm going to follow SADMAP and cancel everything in order as I see it according to SADMAP. So I'm going to go ahead and cancel the addition then the multiplication Then the exponent, it's a squared, so I'm going to square root. The square root cancels the squared. I'd get left with cosine of 3x equals, now remember when you're square rooting a fraction, you square root the numerator and the denominator. Square root of 1 is 1, square root of 2 is square root of 2, which we have to rationalize. That gives you plus or minus root 2 over 2. Anytime you square root while you're solving, you need to put plus or minus. Okay, now for this, for just a second, pretend that the 3 wasn't there. Cosine of what angle is root 2 over 2? So think of your, right? Your special triangles. Which angle would give me a cosine, which is adjacent over hypotenuse, that's root 2 over 2? If you said 45 degrees, you are correct. Now, they're saying that the cosine could be positive or negative. So cosine. Actually, I can do that over here. Cosine, they say, could be positive or negative. So I want reference angles in all quadrants of 45 degrees. So reference angles of 45 degrees from the x-axis, all of these. So this would be 1 pi over 4. Here's zero, this would be a full half rotation. This should e always equal one pi. 
So that's 4 pi over 4, 4 divided by 4 is 1, and then a full rotation would A be 8 pi over 4. Subtract pi over 4 from 4 pi over 4, that's 3 pi over 4, 1 pi over 4 past 4 pi over 4, etc. 1 pi over 4 before the 8 pi over 4 would be 7 pi over 4. So you've got four solutions here, and each of those you need to set them equal to 3x. So remember, in SADMAP, whatever is in the parentheses goes last. So we get an answer of pi over 4, got an answer of 3 pi over 4, and 5 pi over 4, and 7 pi over 4. So in order for me to solve, um, whenever I have fractions on either side, I like to use reciprocal to get rid of it. You could also just divide by 3. Now, the nice thing is that on the left side, you're, the 1 third and the 3 cancel to 1x, which is what you want. So all these are going to have 1x equals. 1x equals. because all these turn to 1. And then on the other side, you multiply from left to right, so that'd be 1 pi over 12, 3 pi over 12, which reduces to pi over 4, 5 pi over 12, and 7 pi over 12. Um, before you circle these as your answers, just ask yourself, are those within the domain of 0 to 2 pi? So do you notice that some of these have a denominator of 12? So think a full rotation would be 24, so double 12, 24 pi over 12. That would be your 2 pi, because 24 divided by 12 is 2 pi. So none of these are past 24 over 12 pi. They're all within this full circle. And then pi over 4 obviously is smaller than a full rotation. So if you're thinking of a denominator of 4, this would be 0. This would be 4 pi over 4. This A full rotation would be 8 pi over 4. Here you'd have 12 pi over 12. So all of these are solutions. All of these angles are solutions. All right, guys, make sure that you're studying because you will have a quiz this week. Um, so let me know if you have any questions. Send me a message on Remind or Google Classroom or email. Have a good day.